Hi guys, welcome back to Rose and Jones. Every fragrance reviewer or um, you know enthusiast that I've, I've crossed paths with and come in, had interaction with, whether it be on Instagram or here on YouTube, have all been so friendly, so generous, so inclusive. Um, some thank yous that I wanted to give to a few lovely members of the fragrance community. One particular reviewer in question is Claire at Smurfy Girly. She is such a lovely lady she really really is we've just kind of you know interacted about fragrances and things but most recently she sent me a, a box full of goodies I didn't ask for them I had no idea I was getting them I mean we're literally talking like tons of samples here we've got stuff from Atelier Dares and yeah there's actually more upstairs as well she even sent me a box uh, a tub of lush body cream which was I am using it I'm really loving it so thank you for that as well Thank you so much for all these wonderful things. It's, again, it's just a lovely thing to be included in this community and to feel that you're part of it and that someone wants your opinion on something. It's, it's a lovely thing to do. Another shout out to another reviewer, and that's my new fragrance friend, John Snow, over at the uh, Scented Snowdrop. So you can find him at Instagram and he reviews some amazing fragrances and he has great ways of describing things. He sent me three amazing samples. So we've got Office for Men by Jeremy Fragrance or Fragrance One. And these two, unfortunately, they got a bit uh, wet, I think, in the post and they blurred out. But these are two by Aaron Terence Hughes. I've never tried any of his fragrance, uh, fragrances, and, and John asked me if I'd had tried any, and I said no. And he said to me, You need a bit of slut in your life. And I had no idea what he was talking about. And actually, it's a lot of Aaron's fragrances are called things like slut and filth. But he, he sent me slut and filth. If anyone's interested in me actually doing any reviews on these fragrances, I of course will, but I'm not going to go into any deep um, reviews on, on my samples here. And I, I will say that Filth from Aaron Terence Hughes was my favourite. I have since purchased a bottle and I can't wait to get that. It is sexy stuff. I also wanted to shout out to Scott over at The Centurion. He's got a YouTube channel here on YouTube. And... Um, He's my new fragrance acquaintance. That's a really hard thing to say, a fragrance acquaintance. Um, but I also wanted to thank him because he sent me some samples that arrived today. And he reached out to me and said, have I ever tried a Penhaligon's? I said, no. And here we have it. So I've got two from Penhaligon and an extra goodie. And he said to me in a letter, please spray it on paper because otherwise I won't forgive him. So I'm guessing it's a really strong oud. But thanks, Scott, so much. I look forward to trying these. I have actually sprayed one of them, the Opus. And the first thing I thought was... James Bond. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess it smells classy and maybe something a spy would wear. I don't know. But thanks so, so much for those. Wookie, can you please stop? What are you doing? You're going to get your whiskers singed. Go on, off you go. Also, Scott has tagged me in the four for life video of headaches over it. I haven't come to a conclusion over which four yet. I'm going to think on it a bit more and I'm going to do that video. So thanks so much, Scott. Okay, so let's talk about new fragrances. I figured this year I would slow right down and just really look at my collection and figure out what it is that I really want. But so far this year it seems that I've not taken any advice from myself and I've actually continued to buy fragrances. Though in my defence I've also sold quite a few. So there is a number in my head that I feel is the complete collection and I don't like to go past it. I don't, there's no point hanging on to fragrances I'm not going to wear. I just really want fragrances that I love. Anyway, aside from all that, let's just crack on with all my purchases. Um, so here's the first one. So um, as you know, I am obsessed with Dancing Roses. I had never tried any of the others in the line, and I was really curious about how all the others smell. I've since tried um, Lavender Illusion and Liquid Diamonds, which are both okay. They're nothing special. Um, Sage Spell, I got the sample, and I actually really enjoyed it, so I figured I would go on eBay and find a good deal, which I did. Someone was selling it. I would not buy this full price. I don't think it's probably worth, I'm just being honest, I don't think this is worth the full price. And this fragrance isn't particularly original. It's not particularly original. It's a, a freshie for summer. It's basically, um, well it's sage obviously, but there's other herbaceous notes in here. I think, I think there's rosemary. Fresh, limey, floral citrus, I guess. It's, it's on the, along those lines. When I first tried this, I was hoping it would be more sagey. Um, because it's the sage that I kind of started to really enjoy last year in various fragrances and I was really looking forward to this being more of a sage heavy um, but still quite fresh fragrance and actually I think it's, it's it's obviously sage in there it's quite creamy it's quite aromatic in a very sort of sort of in a citrus way it's definitely more that sort of summer light 
clean citrus kind of fragrance. It really reminds me of the Maison Francis Cajon, the Aqua Universalis. Is that is that the one? There's one that's very kind of lemonade-y. And as it dries down, I get more of a sort of slightly men's cologne, but quite smooth, quite nicely blended. It's a nice inoffensive summer fragrance. So yeah, that's Sage Spell, Fixer and Rolf, the Magic Collection. It's their private collection. I've said before how much I love these bottles. I think they're beautiful quality, heavy, gorgeous design. So next we have a little cheapy. I got this on eBay, of course. Um, I've been I've been wondering about this fragrance for quite some time. Now I love my Stella McCartney um, Eau de Parfum, the original, and I always wondered about Stella Pop. So this is the Bluebell Pop. I think the, the, the blue bell flower is the main flower note used to create the, bell, the uh, blue bell flower note here. Um, I really think this is beautiful. If you love a delicate floral, um, a soft kind of floral, it's very, it reminds me very much of, sort of an English country garden. It's, it's those kind of soft blue florals that you get. And it's really creamy, it's very, very delicate, it's very gentle, but it is really, really beautiful. This bottle's kind of cool. It really reminds me of an alien. I'm sure there's an alien in a film that looks a bit like this, with like the shoulders really high up and a big round head. I'm going totally off subject, I'm sorry. So anyway, soft, pretty, classy little floral. It's a really nice quality fragrance. It really smells beautiful. Really happy to have that. So that's uh, Stella McCartney Bluebell Pop. So next, it's actually not a bottle. I, got, I bought a decant of this fragrance. It's actually a very expensive one, and I couldn't find anyone selling it for a good price. And I just thought, well, I can't really afford a full bottle. But this is Lune Feline by Atelier Dessert, and that is, this is the, that beautiful, rich vanilla fragrance that I've heard so many review, uh, YouTubers talking about. For Claire on Smurfy Girl, he just, just this week has posted a review of Lune Feline, so go and check that out because it's, it's a good review and she goes into a lot of detail with notes and how it develops. Um, but just to give you an overview, I'm not I don't tend to go into, um, I don't tend to love vanilla fragrances generally, they're not for me, but this particular one, it's, it's completely on another planet of the vanilla it's so rich and dense it's a thick really thick resinous smell and there's a beautiful cardamom and spicy um oh it's beautiful it's, it's rich cardamom and spices wrapped around vanilla it smells kind of eastern it smells expensive it smells like something the maharaja could wear in an indian spa i don't know i love it and this is obviously the one from the design that has the um the gold flakes if i can just zoom there you go so it has all those little gold flakes. It looks beautiful in the actual bottle that it comes in, but I obviously haven't got that, but it still has them floating around. So that is really gorgeous. Feline by Atelier Dessert, if I'm saying that correctly. Okay, so next up, uh, I've actually got a couple from the Christine Dior Privé line here. Um, normally I like to have them in their boxes when I display them, but I've, I didn't bring them down, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so Holy Peony came out last year 2019 I had the mini of this one so I knew that I liked it it's um it's quite similar to if you like La Colle, La Colle Noir you probably will like Holy Peony because it has a very similar um flavor if you like it's got that same Dior flavor it's quite translucent it's not very heavy it does actually smell quite fruity in like a really sweet um, raspberry berry kind of way but the peony content in here is so pretty it's very very sweet but it's really pretty it's quite a youthful scent and um, people on Fragrantica have actually whoops uh, likened this to Miss Dior Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet I think it is I'm not sure um, so I haven't smelt that I'm not sure about that one but this one I'm assuming probably would smell a lot more blended a lot more you know a bit more quality I'd imagine, I don't know. Um, I really enjoy this. It's it's just so easy to wear. It's very lovely. And so yeah, that's it. That's Holy Peony. So my second Christine Dior is Dior Amour. Um, yeah, and this is the big, <laughs> it looks huge on here. I bought Dior Amour because I've had a craving for something powdery, something, you know, cl classically feminine, but in a feather-like delicate way. And hearing about this fragrance, I had a feeling I was going to love it. Three notes of, it's iris, it's jasmine, and I think there is something called powdery notes in here. It's not as powdery as you might think. I really wasn't sure when I, before I tried it how powdery this was going to be, but it really isn't. It's like having, it's like a your skin but better sort of fragrance. It's like having a light, sweet musk. When you first spray it on, it almost disappears completely. Um, and you can go quite liberally with this. I mean, I've got 
quite a dent in the top there and I've not had it for very long. But what I love is how it leaves this really pretty trail behind you, which I actually can detect. I can, you start to smell it on yourself after a while once you know your skin warms up and it starts to develop, I guess. It kind of leaves us this really gentle trail of um, like a powder puff musk. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's not straight up powdery, it's a bit of a tang in here. Um, it's got, it's definitely got a unique a little scent going on I don't know nothing else I smell is like this put it that way and I think it's just really really beautiful so next is a really welcome addition to my rose collection so this is from a house called Papillon Artisan Perfumes and it's a fragrance house that's from the New Forest here in the UK um, so Tobacco Rose is the fragrance that I fell in love with at Papillon beautifully spicy it's a really spicy it's dense sexy lovely ambergris, lovely notes. You can smell, when there's something about niche perfumes, certainly good ones like this, is you can, it's, they're so different to other fragrances. You can, you can smell this depth and you can feel the layers of notes. Something about it, there's such a difference. And this fragrance is, it really gives you that. It gives you that beautiful example of, of quality niche. My husband bought this for me for Valentine's Day. It's lovely to buy fragrances for yourself, but when you get them as a gift, and you know it's one you love. There's something even more special about that. Now, for Valentine's Day, I actually bought my husband a fragrance. He's not into fragrances at all. And I'm kind of pushing them on him a little bit. I know it's not good, but, you know, I want him to have a nice little collection. Ombre Leather by Tom Ford. And I'm going to mention it because I kind of bought it, really. I bought it so I could wear it myself. You know, I'm just going to be honest about it. It's a really beautiful fragrance. I've really got into leather fragrances last year. Um, and when I smelt this, we were going through... Um, yeah, through Gatwick at Christmas when we were going skiing and I, we, we both smelt this and he was like, yeah, it's nice. Which to me means, yeah, he actually really likes it because he normally doesn't have any enthusiasm for fragrance. So I know he liked this one. And I thought, oh my God, it's absolutely beautiful. There's quite a piercing sharpness in here from the leather. But it's also got that really lovely creamy thing going on. It kind of, it's got something about it. It reminds me of Tuscan leather. You know that sharpness you get in that? But it's toned right down and you're left with this sort of creamy um, essence of, of Tuscan leather. This is what it reminds me of. So next from the house of Panna London. The only reason I ended up going to Panna London is because I have heard so much about pink champagne truffle. And I really fancied a chocolatey fragrance. But I didn't buy pink champagne truffle. I bought Gormantic Orange. This one just stood out to me as being the most beautiful fragrance of all of the ones I tried. So although it doesn't actually give me that, whoops, that chocolate fix that I was after in Gourmantic Orange, there is a chocolate quality to this, but it's very, very um, light. And it just, it's always doing, I think it's giving you a bit of a creamy sweetness, but it's really all about the orange. The orange in here is just so juicy and bright and photorealistic. It's got a lovely booziness and depth that it just, Oh, you just, you just want to keep smelling it and keep spraying it and it's just be absolutely beautiful. Something so exquisitely beautiful about this bottle and that lovely gold liquid juice. It, but yeah, so that's Gormantic Orange by Panna London. Okay, so I've got two from Sylvain Delacorte. This is obviously off of the back of me buying and reviewing the sample collections. So the first collection, or the first... Um, fragrance that I bought was one from the Orange Blossom collection which is the um, collection that I reviewed recently. All really beautiful by the way. One that really really won me over was in fact Zyrus. Zyrus was the sweetest uh, fragrance in the Orange Blossom collection. It had a lovely note of petagrain. It's got the most beautiful orange blossom lipstick thing going on um, which sounds bizarre but it really really has there's a sort of soft smoothness that gives you that lipsticky vibe one thing I have to say about Sylvain Delacorte's fragrances is they all have this beautiful angelic airy weightlessness to them and they all smell so natural and so um, botanical all of them they all have that kind of character happening and with this one particularly I just found it had the most sweet content and I don't know, it's just it's just the one that worked for me and I absolutely adore this fragrance. I haven't reviewed the Must Collection yet and I will do so, I'm going to do that along with the Vanillas because I've had a request to do that. I think they're all extremely beautifully done and so well blended but one particular one 
but I already kind of had my eye on anyway was Florentina. I'd already, as I said before, I was looking for, I had this craving for a, a powdery, um, irisy kind of a fragrance. And this is one of the ones I was looking into. It's just such a delicate lipstick scent with an airiness, with this angelic kind of innocence behind it, but with all that beautiful niche quality and beautiful ingredients. The iris is so incredibly smooth in this, and whatever musk was used is just beautiful. So that is Florentina by Sylvain Delacotte. My next fragrance was completely impulsive. I was going through a load of samples that I've got in my huge sample box, and I came across a Parfums de Mali one. I've obviously just looked over and not even realised it was there, but yeah, <laughs> it was called Darcy. And um, so I tried it out, sprayed it on, and thought, oh, actually, this is actually quite nice. Let's get it out of the box. Um, this is all about the fruits, berries, speci specifically berries, chocolate and musk. So Darcy, or Mr. Darcy, just makes me think of um, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Um, it's exquisitely present presented here in this bottle and obviously the packaging. I love all of the uh, the line from Parfums de Mali. This probably is the most blingy of all the bottle designs, I think. And it's been out for some time. This one was out long before Delina. It's <laughs> some sort of body musk, which sounds not great but it's really quite nice I don't know what it is I really like this fragrance it's like a body musk sort of a scent but laced up with with berries definitely red berries and chocolate and that's it just red berries chocolate and body musk and I I just find this a really comfortable fragrance to wear I enjoy it I wouldn't have bought it otherwise the the initial spray the initial scent is doesn't change and really, you start off with a dry down scent. You, you start off with a scent that you feel that should be there after a while, you know, after it's worn. So it's quite linear. It really is, but I enjoy it. I enjoy it, and I'm happy to have it. Two more fragrances, and they arrived today. So I totally blind bought this fragrance. I've heard Claire, that's Murphy Girly, talk about this fragrance very recently, and she compared it to the Stella Absolute. Now Stella does the most beautiful rose fragrance, or she did in the past. They seem to have changed a tiny bit since reformulations. And it's one you can get a good deal on if you're prepared to sort of hunt it down and have a look, and which is exactly what it did. I found somebody selling it on eBay, and I got it for a really, really good price. I actually love the packaging and presentation of this. It's an incredibly heavy, big bottle. Um, and although this was second hand, someone has actually used this, um, which is why I got a good, a good deal on it. They've kept all the packaging and they've kept it beautifully. And I love the quality. It's got the magnetic cap, which is fantastic. It's got, look at the juice in that. It's like a deep, I don't know if you pick up on that. It's a deep, plummy, pinky, brown, gorgeous nectar look at that it's the ellie Saab. um it's called essence one rose i think she described it as having like um you know that confection of sugar like icing sugar that dusty dusty quality and i i totally get that in this it reminds me of turkish delight that's covered in that dusted sugar and it's very dusty it's got that real sweet dust and it is quite turkish delighty but it has got that vintage-esque um, thing. I think it is quite a mature scent. Not like old lady smell, not at all. But mature in the most beautiful, beautiful way. Um, I, I Originally I thought this smelled soapy, but I don't think it does now. I'm not, I just wasn't sure what I was getting. If you had the most luxurious rose talcum powder ever, it would smell like this. And that's how my nose picks up on this fragrance. That's what I get from this fragrance. It's certainly beautiful, and I think for the price that I got it at, it was a great bargain, so I'm happy to have it. So that's Ellie Saab, Essence Number 1, Rose. I don't know why I haven't tried this fragrance, well, I do know why I haven't tried this fragrance sooner, and it's a really stupid reason, really. I've never bothered to reach for it, because one, I wasn't really into sort of coffee, a coffee fragrance, didn't really appeal to me, it wasn't on my radar to check out. But if I'm completely honest, I really don't like the packaging on these bottles, and Half of the pleasure of finding a, a fragrance I love is enjoying the bottle. I, mean, I don't know if that sounds really stupid. Um, I don't know, but it, that is that is what it is. This is like a kind of hairspray, or I don't know. It just doesn't scream, you know, quality fragrance. So when you first spray this, you get you do get the coffee. At least I get the coffee. I get this beautiful, creamy, um, just beautiful coffee uh, smell. 
straight away, but it disappears quite quickly. So I can understand people um, not being completely happy with this fragrance. Those that obviously read Intense Cafe, of course you would expect coffee, of course you would. And you don't get it for very long, so that is a shame for those who are wanting that. But rose in here comes forward so quickly and mingles with everything else, and it becomes this most delicious gourmand creamy milky coffee rose oh my god it is delicious it's absolutely beautiful this was love at first sniff for sure i immediately hopped onto ebay i didn't want to spend too much money i knew i was going to get this if i had to buy the you know buy it for a full price then i was going to because i really think this is bloody gorgeous um but luckily there was someone selling it i love sweet roses especially if they're slightly gourmand somehow this just ticks every single box and it is such a gorgeous additional rose to my collection. I think I better wrap this up. Um, thanks everyone for watching and if you stayed with me this long then thank you very much. I'm very grateful. So as always guys, thanks so much for joining me and tuning in and I look forward to you joining me on my next one. Take care now. Bye.